Castaways from the Backyardigans has been topping the US viral charts for the past week, and of course, TikTok is to blame. TikTok is the reason why a 16-year-old children's song will likely be the song of the summer of 2021. And honestly, I'm not mad about it. It's a really good song. It was written by Douglas Weisselman, who likely wrote it off of the Samba do Orfeo from the 1959 Brazilian film Black Orpheus. It's a really cool song that references a rich Brazilian songwriting tradition with cool chord progressions and cool melodies and just an immaculate flavor. Immaculate flavor! So with that said, let's do it everybody. Let's do a deep dive into the music theory of castaways from the animated television program The Backyardigans. This video was brought to you by Curiosity Stream and Nebula, my streaming service where you can watch an extended version of this video. Castaways, we are castaways. Ahoy there, ahoy, we are castaways. We're stuck where we are, with no house, no car. Castaways, ahoy, we are castaways. Evan Lurie and and Douglas Weisselman were behind the music of The Backyardigans, a show which features a different style of popular music from around the world for every episode. For example, Argentinian Tango and the Secret Mission episode, and American Funk and the Yeti episode. The Yeti Stomp is a certified banger. I cannot wait for the inevitable Cory Wong cover. Fingers crossed. The episode featuring Castaways, Castaways is an episode that's based on bossa nova music, the classic Brazilian blend of jazz and samba that was incredibly popular internationally in the 1950s and 60s. The music budget for the Backyardigans, an animated television show for young children, was well, even for the time, very generous. Lurie would note that, quote, Nickelodeon understands that if I'm gonna do a Rossini piece, I'm gonna need 25 musicians. They've always been pretty good about letting us have the money required to do what we wanna do. Who doesn't say so much? This large budget also extended to dance and choreography. The show hired former director of the First Steps program at New York's Alvin Ailey School, Beth Bogish, to choreograph the eclectic musical score, creating authentic routines for every style. These routines were fully filmed and then performed before being animated. So in other words, the Backyardigans combined high quality music with high quality dance for a young Gen Z. Enter TikTok. On April 7th, the user Swagsurf posted her fourth video in a series about how awesome the Backyardigans music was. This one was focused on castaways. Several remixes, dances, and duets later, a veritable tsunami of castaways content flooded the platform in the second week of May 2021, adding yet another song to the canon of TikTok viral music, where the distinction between irony and sincerity doesn't really matter because it's all damn fun anyway. This particular moment of fun, the song Castaways, is in the key of F major. It follows an A, B, A form, where the A section has three unit motifs, little nuggets of melodic information with an associated lyric, which are all strung together to create the melody. The first motif, the Castaways motif, is based on a descending syncopated D minor triad, harmonized with an F major seven chord, the one chord, the tonic. Castaways, we are castaways. This earworm of a motif instantly has a vibe because we keep hitting the sixth note of the scale in the key of F, that's the note D. Now in European classical music, generally the sixth note wants to resolve down to the fifth note, like this. Amen. But in jazz and bossa nova music, you, you don't need to do that with the sixth note of the scale. You can kind of just let it hang there ambiently in the air. And when you do that, you get a melody which really accentuates the bossa nova vibe. The melody keeps hammering on that six more with the next motif, the ahoy motif, which ascends. Ahoy, ahoy there. This then comes back around to the castaways motif, which descends. Castaways. Ahoy there, ahoy. We are cast away. So I should note that there has been a lot of discussion on what the second note of the melody should be. Is it an F, which would sound like this? Or is it an E, which would sound like this? Because it was young children singing on the original recording, the pitch is a little waffly, so it could go either way. But in talking with Martina, we decided to go with F. So take that how you will. Anyway. So far, we've only had one chord, the one chord. 
And this is our point of rest. This is our tonic chord. But now the harmony becomes a little bit more active. We get an F sharp diminished seventh chord, a sharp one diminished, which then goes to a G minor seven chord, the two minor seven chord, followed by a C seven chord, the five seven chord, two, five. Progressions which go from the second chord of the key to the fifth chord of the key, these two five progressions are extremely important in jazz and bossa nova harmony. Without them, you wouldn't get that immaculate flavor, immaculate flavor. of bossa nova music. They help give expectations of resolution. The third motif that we get has this large melodic leap. We go up a minor seventh from this D all the way up to a C and then resolve down to an A. The harmony is just oscillating back and forth between this G minor seven and the C, setting up expectations of resolution. We're stuck where we are with no house, no car. And then to end the A section, we get another descending castaways motif, followed by an ascending ahoy, followed by yet another descending castaways motif, ending on that sixth note right there. Castaways ahoy, we are castaways. So yeah, like the song was written for like a young children's TV show, but I mean, it's it's a really well-written melody. It's a really charming melody, like. Mm, beautiful. Douglas Weisselman did not have to go so hard when he wrote this song, and yet he did. And now we have a banger on our hands. It sounds like he borrowed very heavily from one of the most beautiful Brazilian songs of all time, Luis Bonfa's Samba de Orfeo from the 1959 film Black Orpheus. <laughs> It, like Castaways, is also sung by children with a strummed acoustic guitar and has that innocent, nostalgic vibe. But on a technical level, both songs are harmonized with syncopated minor triads harmonized with the one major seven chord. Castaways. Samba do Orfeo. Similar, not the same, but similar. But more importantly, they have kind of the same chord progression for the A sections. There are six measures of the one chord, followed by eight measures of two fives, which resolve into two more measures of the one chord. Their songs are not exactly the same, but there's some clear inspiration from taking the same kinds of chords and the same kinds of melodies from a 60-year-old Brazilian song. It's the same immaculate Flavor. Immaculate flavor! Lurian Weisselman took care to replicate authentic historic musical aspects for every style of music that the show covered. And the show ended up covering a lot of different styles of music, each episode containing three or four different songs. When asked about the breadth of music represented, Lurie would reply, It really feels like an accomplishment. I hope I'm expanding the musical vocabulary of a generation. I mean, you know, enough anyway for the music to dominate the charts 16 years later. We were out at sea on a sailing ship. The rain began to rain and the wind began to whip. We felt our ship tip. It was going down. So we launched our lifeboat so we wouldn't drown. The lyricist Yip Harburg, who wrote Somewhere Over the Rainbow, has this fantastic quote. Words make you think thoughts, music makes you feel feelings, songs make you feel thoughts. When we get to the bridge of Castaways, we're going to change keys several times, which is gonna make us feel like we're going on a journey, and that's gonna be reflecting in the lyrics. We're going to feel the thought of a journey. The specific way we're gonna change keys is through a melodic sequence. We're gonna take the same melody and just kinda of like move it around, up and down to different keys. This technique was very common actually in bossa nova music. I talked a lot about this in my video on The Girl from Ipanema, which is the most famous bossa nova, which has a bridge that changes keys in a very similar way to castaways. We first modulate to the key of C major with a 2-5 progression, a key that's not too terribly far from where we started in F major. This key change makes us feel like we're going to a new place, like we're going on a journey. And the lyric, we were out at sea, confirms that musical feeling. We were out at sea on a sailing ship. This melodic phrase repeats again, this time down a whole step in the key of B flat major. The rain began to rain and the wind began to whip. 
the melodic sequence breaks on the phrase, we felt our ship tip. And on that scary moment of feeling the ship tip over, we get a 2-5 now in a minor key. Ooh, dark. We felt our ship tip, it was going down. Now in the lyric going down, we have this nice chromatic bass motion. The chord stays A minor, but the bass goes A, G sharp, G. It goes down, very much like the Backyardigans ship does. A, G sharp, G. Oh no, the ship is taking on water. How much more chromatic bass motion can it handle? <laughs> uh. Goofy. It's a pretty literal example of the music imitating the lyrics, like this descending bass line, a descending ship. But if we're going to feel this thought of the ship going down, a descending bass line is a great way to do that. Now, you might not necessarily have noticed this bass line when you first listened to Castaways, but your brain did. And children's brains have the habit of soaking this kind of context up. We felt the ship tip, it was going down. So Castaways is a song where we feel the thoughts of Uniqua, Tyrone, and Pablo as they tell their story. We experience their storytelling through musical storytelling. The bridge tells the story of the past, and the A section tells the story of the present. The bridge section ends by cycling through the cycle of fifths with dominant seventh chords. D7, G7, C7, which sets up our return to the A section. So we launched our lifeboat so we wouldn't try. It's really not that surprising if you think about it that this song had a moment of viral resurgence this year on a platform that was designed to remix and reuse bits of cultural detritus as sweet dopamine giving nostalgia drenched content especially after a year which didn't seem to make any sense things didn't really seem to happen for a reason and castaways the song might for some people remind them of a time where things did happen for reasons. Things were safe. Castaways acts as an anesthetizing agent to ward off the trauma of a year that was lost. Kind of like the Backyardigans ship. And so I can think of no better song to represent summer of 2021 than Castaways. We are Castaways, then and now. Castaways. So I'm a millennial, I'm an old, so uh, my five-year-old self did not get to experience the Backyardigans as it aired, but even without nostalgia tinted glasses, it's pretty plain to see that the music on the show is very, very good. <laughs> so uh, the percussion instrument that's going on is something called a pandero, which is kind of like a Brazilian tambourine. If you want to hear me talk a little bit more about some of the bossa nova songs that were featured on the Castaways episode, and there's some really cool ones in there, uh, you can watch me talk about them on the extended version of this video, available exclusively on Nebula. Nebula is a creator-owned streaming service where you can watch extended versions of many of the videos that I have here on this channel. A lot of these extended deep dives into music theory and some of the more esoteric music history things, and it's a lot of good stuff over there. You can also watch bonus content from many of your favorite YouTube educational creators, including Windover Productions, Charles Cornell, Legal Eagle, Lindsay Ellis, Real Engineering, and many, many more. It's a great place to watch and discover quality content entirely ad-free as well as support your favorite creators. Now, Nebula and my channel are supported by another fantastic streaming service, the sponsor of today's video, Curiosity Stream, the go-to source for the very best documentaries on the internet with thousands of titles to choose from, including Stradivarius, Mysteries of the Supreme Violin. It's a fantastic documentary about Stradivarius violins, which are highly sought after because of their unique acoustical properties. Also, they're incredibly expensive. Uh, I highly recommend a documentary. 
it's fun to watch. Anyway, if you're interested in these kinds of great documentaries, if you sign up for Curiosity Stream right now with the link in the description or curiositystream.com slash Adam Neely, you'll also get a subscription to my streaming service, Nebula, for free. What's more is that for a limited time, this Curiosity Stream Nebula bundle is 41% off the annual subscription at $11.79 a year, or less than $1 a month, which is just a great deal for a subscription service, so yeah. Just throwing it out there. By signing up to Curiosity Stream with the link in the description, you're not only supporting this channel, but all of the creators over at Nebula, as we create content that aims to engage the world in a more meaningful way. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. We are castaways. We are castaways. Peace.